We live in UK and we are in the cradle of chocolate, Switzerland, where we meet a bean to bar chocolate maker that started a few years ago to make it from cocoa beans. Yes, seems normal to meet a chocolate in Switzerland, but it is not so easy to find someone that makes his chocolate from the cocoa bean. This time we are in Zurich and we are with Kay Cousin, one that followed in love with chocolate, but when he discovered the bean to bar production, he decided to make only that. Welcome to Chocolate Podcast. We are at the episode number 26. We have seen uh, chocolate all over the world, but everyone knows that uh, the Switzerland is the house of chocolate. So this time uh, we, we have a Swiss bean to bar chocolate maker. Ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to meet Kay Kausen, the owner of Touchably Chocolate. Hello Kay, how are you? Thank you very much. Um, I'm super fine. Um, I'm really looking forward for having this speech or this talk and um, <laughs> I'm really looking also forward for your questions. So I'm super happy and I have a special guest today here, but he comes okay. later to us. Okay, we will see later, sure. Um, okay, normally we ask our guest to introduce himself, so we have to do the same with you. Um, please tell us a little summary of your life, your background, uh, before that you, you fall in love with, uh, with chocolate. Please. Um, yes, I would say I'm a typical visionary. Mm -hmm. um, I love to do things which I really love and I don't do things which I don't like. So um, I, I started as a street constructor uh, mm -hmm. many years ago, so the apprenticeship as a street constructor. Then I was um, soon in leadership in Swiss construction and then I worked for the red drilling machines and um, but between I had, a, I had a lot of different things like a vinyl record store, uh -huh. um, so for electronic music, um, our own cell phone brand in Africa. Mm -hmm. and, um, then I worked, but still I worked, I mean sales and key account manager. Mm -hmm. And then I felt in some companies, in big companies, there is still something wrong. So I did um, the master in um, organization leadership and change management and did our own company with that. So I, um, I was leading some different companies um, around the world um, with, um, as a consultant. But then it came to the point where I was like, I want to do something with cheese, chocolate, or wine. Typical things like in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a small company in a garage. They just had one tempering machine, a 25 kilogram tempering machine, and a bridge. Uh -huh. And then they were bankruptcy. And the design, I really loved the design, which was called a Tauchle. Okay. And I was like, I just go over this company because um, it was really like, this is my chance to do chocolate. Okay. And I started with chocolate. But the problem was, the problem was, um, I really felt like I'm doing chocolate because even I bought Couverture. So I was really proud, I'm Swiss and doing chocolate until I found this movement, Bean to Bar. Okay. And then that is how it starts. And uh, so Tauchery as a brand already existed. But it was already famous for, uh, I think you're famous for these sticks that you roll with chocolate. Can you tell us something about that? Yes, the sticks, um, so one second, um, um, the stick was, um, that was the first um, product. It is a stick which you can dive into the hot chocolate. Okay. So the, the meaning of diving in Swiss or uh, in German is tauchen. Okay. It's German all the time. They put a L-I behind uh -huh. it because it sounds more sweet. So ah, this okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it sounds a little bit more sweet. So and um, this kut is also called tauchle. This kind uh -huh. of thing. Uh -huh. That's why all the time. So uh -huh. that's the, um, the name of um, this product. I never thought I getting more a little bit. I would say a little bit more famous. Okay. Um, into our movement, 
I yeah. wouldn't say I, I'm famous, but I would say a little bit famous. Mm -hmm. And um, then I, this name is not working in English, but um, I don't want to change it. So I sure. leave it locally. Now, also because everybody knows you as a Tacherly. I mean, now it's not, in, not possible to change it now. It's not possible to change it, but um, we did a, li a little bit redesigns, of course, for everything. So that was the beginning yeah. of the bean to bar movement. The, the chocolate is important in Switzerland, and, but normally also in Switzerland there are uh, a big uh, quantity uh, of, chocolate, of chocolatiers that they, they, they melt uh, the chocolate in the industrial chocolate and then they, they create their, their pralines, their productions. Um, I, know, I, know and I know that you have also a, a tattoo <laughs> with the bin to bar, I see it, and I know that you... you you discovered the the bin to bar, and uh, you 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 turned a little bit this company with the with the bin to bar. And I remember also uh, your your visit in our school in the in the beginning. Um, what do you remember about it, and uh, how, how do you start with bin to bar process? <coughs> Very interesting. Um, it was really like I didn't have any clue. I really did. First of all, I didn't know where I have to buy my beans. Mm -hmm. I, at this point, I even didn't know that Chocoa is existing. In um, 2016, at the beginning of 2016. Yeah. And I was really like, I was first of all, and that is the hard thing for a bean to bar maker when he starts. It's like where I get the beans. So this was the point where you also helped me a lot. Um, I, um, this amazing Ghana beans, which we won silver in the AOC. Oh, yeah. I really love these beans. Um, this was the point, like how I get the beans. So in Switzerland, if you ask someone, he is telling us that like, like on the one container, you don't get any bean. <laughs> <laughs> so and um, the, then um, the first beans I came from you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's true. <laughs> it was really a uh, really kind supporting. <laughs> and, um, and then I went to Chocoa and then you met more people. Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, but also with the machines, how I learned it, um, it was really like at the beginning, I, di I didn't know what I need, the kind of process. So um, for me, it was, it was like I was a lot of in the internet and I started to visit chocolate makers. Mm -hmm. So I was in, um, I was in Bali at, um, at Meso, at Pot Chocolate. I was um, in, in Iceland at Omnom Chocolate. Mm -hmm. I, my, where I my first met was Spencer from Coco Runners. Mm -hmm. I met him in I Iceland. It was yeah. amazing this, um, coincidence. And um, I learned everywhere a lot. And then I came back and started to buy the machine. First yeah. of all, I bought an FPM machine. Yeah. <laughs> and then you started being a, a very important uh, bean to bar chocolate maker in Switzerland. And other chocolate maker? Important bean to bar maker because um, in Switzerland there is a different point. Yeah. In Switzerland, even the Swiss guys think um, Switzerland is doing the best chocolate. Obviously, industrial wise, it's a really nice chocolate, but yeah. um, still with a lot of sugar and everything because the bean to bar movement or the fine flavor movement is something different. It has yeah. different points like no vanilla, less sugar, or um, yeah. more flavor-wise, more quality beans and everything. And um, this is hard to explain in Switzerland. I think in Swiss, it's really a hard life being a chocolate maker. But, that, but are the consumers now starting understanding the differences between one chocolate and the other? Because it's hard because every, I, I may say in Europe, we are more used to the commercial chocolate. We grow up with that kind of chocolate, it's difficult, yeah. Yeah, in, um, I think um, that is the bean to bar movement in Switzerland is indirect helping each other, but just indirect, it's not direct. Mm -hmm. But still, if you are on a market, um, it depends on what kind of market. If you are on a slow food market, people don't think they just buy because they think that has to be quality. Yeah. But if you're on a commercial market, 
there is still Swiss guys that say, are you crazy? Um, eight euros for a bar or seven euros for a bar or six euros for a bar. Yeah. But still the meaning in Switzerland. So, but it's um, town in town says grow slowly, slowly their mind for yeah. also having a little bit another quality and also going on a journey. Because that is really an important point. I would never say I'm doing the best chocolate. Never. Yeah, sure. Because okay. every each taste of each person is different. Yeah. So um, for us, it's like we give you we give you a flavor journey or a flavor sure. experience. Sure. And yeah. it's also really important speaking about other brands that people also try other brands. Yeah. And uh, tell us uh, uh, how do you make uh, the chocolate? The process that uh, you do to to create uh, your your chocolate. So, because I ask this, because normally um, the chocolatier <laughs> don't uh, show the the laboratory, uh, don't uh, explain uh, so many things. They have they are full of secrets, and the the main secret is that they don't make chocolate. Instead, uh, you do it, and so tell us what is the process. So we don't have a secret. So if you want, I can take you with me. Or I just explain. Yeah, you can explain. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first of all, and we roast the beans. Yeah. Before I roasted the nips, but um, we started to change it with a new roast that we roast the beans. Yeah. And um, we roast the beans in our oven. Before we had a drum roaster, which wasn't really that good quality. I don't tell you the brand. <laughs> um, and now we roast in a, in a normal oven because the quality is much better. Then we, we know in cracking the beans. Mm -hmm. so, um, there is really important for um, having really attention about the loss. So we are around um, 18 to 20 percent loss. Okay. Um, then we go through a pre grinder. Um, mm -hmm. We have a batch knife mill with the mm -hmm. pre grinder. Um, we have a big one because we really need quantity yeah. and, um, and then it depends for the fine flavor, we go into a melange, yeah. um, into FBM melange obviously, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> and yeah. um, for the big batches and that is, the, um, that is the different, maybe first I have to show you yeah. th that you understand, we have the, um, the fine flavors okay. mm -hmm. and we have more, and that is more um, the, the, the colored ones. Okay. Um, I'm showing you that because um, it's really important to understand that we work in two different ways. So for us, it's, we don't just focus on fine flavors. Okay. And that is a little bit a point. What I feel in the bean to bar movement is like, a lot of people, they want to do the best things, and that's right, I mean, and I really like that. But what really a lot of people don't focus on is like still 80, 90 percent want to having a commercial or mainstream chocolate with vanilla inside, maybe a little bit more sugar, yeah. Or, yeah. or it's not like they don't want to go on a flavor journey. So that is the reason, because we have the fine flavors, which we do in the melanger. And then we have a 250 kilogram ball mill where we more producing just one sort of milk chocolate and one sort of dark chocolate. Okay. Um, and as you can hear, 250 kilogram, obviously we produce a lot more. Sure. Um, because, but there is still, that is the point. That's the point for the bean to bar makers is there is still a lot of people, they want to have chocolate and the quality and the story behind the beans from small producers. Yeah. They don't want to go on a flavor journey. So that is the point why we do also a little bit more mainstream chocolate with vanilla, not vanillin. With okay. vanilla, we do an um, organic one and we still know the story about, um, about the farmers and everything. Obviously, it's not the most the most expensive or the most flavor-wise bean, but um, we, we use a standard bean, but where we still pay more than at the cacao price. Yeah. Exactly. Talking about the beans, uh, because the bean to bar movement is growing and the market is growing, uh, we feel that uh, this can help also the farmers, 
Okay. How do you as a company, well, first, where do you get the beans? In which countries? And how do you think your company can help the farmers? That's a really good question. Um, how we can help the farmers? That is, that is the point. Um, on one side, first of all, it's important how you source your beans. So, for example, we source the beans over Darnhauer, a, a part of, or yeah. about, about Campo Lindo. It's, um, she's a small um, dealer in Amsterdam. Yeah. And um, this is more the point where you get the beans um, cheaper because they import more. So that is um, the sourcing, I would say, the uh, indirect sourcing. Or where I get the beans from you. This is the indirect sourcing. Mostly you get, um, or not mostly, all the time you get the story. You can visit the farm all the time. And you really know that they pay enough, the farmer. Honestly and seriously, I also don't know it, how to export. Because I don't know the rules and everything. So mm -hmm. that's the next point. We have some farmers, or we met some farmers, for example, um, I met my, I would say, one of my new best friends in my life. Uh -huh. It's a um, Christian from Cacao Petulia. Yeah, uh -huh. from, from Colombia. Here he is. Okay, can you come one second? Yeah. <laughs> we had there, yeah. I brought the beans. Hi, this is Christian from Cacao yeah. Hi, Christian. So, how the, how the, um, the chocolate makers could help the farmers? This is, uh, I think, a better question for you. The very important thing is, uh, as a chocolate uh, maker, you can uh, help the farmers by giving feedback on the beans, by making the chocolates, and that's the problem for many chocolate, uh, for many co uh, cacao beans uh, producers, that um, it's not so easy to get a chocolate made with, the, with their own beans. So the good thing with Kai is that uh, he was able to make uh, chocolate with a small batch. Normally, if you work uh, with other companies which are not being too bad, this is uh, you need hundreds of kilos yeah, before yeah. you can really get uh, a chocolate out of your beans. And uh, beans uh, without having been tested in a chocolate are difficult to to evaluate. So this this is very good for the chocolate. Okay. I got one question for you. Is there any chocolate makers among all your customers that gives you indication about the fermentation? Or they just accept your own way to ferment the beans? No, there are some chocolate makers which have some special requirements. Uh -huh. But uh, we don't recommend that because it's uh, you do your chocolate, we do our beans. <laughs> 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 But it depends. Uh, we have a very advanced uh, fermentation uh, processes, and we spend a lot of money in, uh, in the fermentation process, uh, which is not a regular case. Many, many uh, cacao producers may be happy if the chocolate makers give them feedback on, uh, on, uh, on how to ferment. But I think it's, uh, it's not realistic that a chocolate maker tells you how you should ferment. Okay. Oh, see, they are. I mean, it's uh, far away. I mean, few of yes. them could do it, but I think. Uh, no, it's a it's a lack of experience. They are not experienced on that. So so yeah, there are there are chocolate makers with ask for special fermentations just to try to see if they can get some flavors which they normally don't get from the beans. But you have to be careful yeah. because. Uh, the fermentation of cacao beans is very complex and you can uh, easily damage the beans if you don't ferment them well. And do you sell your cocoa beans only to bean to bar chocolate makers or also to the big companies? Oh no, we are a small producer. Okay, only okay. chocolate uh, makers uh, bean to bar. Yeah, but you can proudly say you sell um, at the moment, um, you at sold the out. Yes, I'm sold your... out. Yes, <laughs> unfortunately for me. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a premium uh, premium price we ask because it's criollo, it's uh, 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 organic, single variety, so it's uh, quite unique. So it's something you don't find very easy. Yeah, and um, last year we won gold with his beans at the AOC. The uh, B9 
Um, wait, I can show you. This is the Petulia B9. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is the Petulia B9, and um, it's uh, 80%. It's um, just cacao and sugar, nothing yeah. else. Uh, Kay, you mentioned before your, when you started that you met other chocolate makers, okay? So in, in Bali, pot chocolate, uh, and this and that. Which is, Meso, which, which are the differences in the relationship among chocolate makers, bean to bar chocolate makers, and uh, the, the relationship between the chocolatier, what are called chocolatier, among them. I mean, this, if you have to compare two groups. And um, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. There is a lot of difference. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's um, the chocolatiers now um, feel slowly like there is a new movement. There's a new movement. There is, um, they look at chocolate in another way. And um, you, really see, you really see the difference. Like, um, like, I think there is some point of how they can do it and how they win, just for example, how they win prizes. And, um, and, um, and also the point is, of course, I think they don't like us that much because mm -hmm. start to we start to communicate. We, uh, the Bean to Bar women start to speak about fair prices because we have an impact. We really have an impact. Yeah. We not just have a story about the about show farm, um, but the 99% of the other cacao is buying uh, anywhere else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we, have, we really have, um, we, we can show the farmer, we can really show the farmer, we can, we can show them the back which we, when we were on the farm, for example, we were at January, we were at Caco Petulia. Um, you can see on Instagram, <laughs> we were at Caco Petulia, how we, how we fill the bag, and now we have the same bag here, and how we are emptying the bag. And um, it's, it's um, but this is also on the other way, it's really hard to explain in Switzerland, because in Switzerland, if you say you make chocolate, or you produce chocolate, the people just say, it's normal. It's normal, yeah. <laughs> Still thinking every each chocolate is doing their own chocolate. Yeah, yeah. So um, that is the gap to explain, and um, I think it's really important that you find the gap that you don't attack chocolate yes, but you still can say um, yes, we do our own chocolate. Yeah. And this gap, I think, it's really important also to find it for each person by themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, do you sell uh, also abroad uh, or uh, only in, uh, in uh, the Swiss market? Yeah, um, I sell more and more abroad. But mm -hmm. the problem is, um, um, just as an example, um, I am speaking now in dollars, um, a, work, a workforce like is working here just in the production, it's getting around 28 to 30 dollars mm -hmm. an hour. Yeah. So it's like... Um, how in Switzerland, you, how you can be compete outside. So that is, um, that is a really hard question about, um, also for Europeans, but even uh, more than for Swiss guys, is how you can compete. Even for just, I have some customers in Italy, I have some customers in Germany, I have some customers in French, also abroad in Asia or America, but um, I'm focused now more in Europe. And... The second point is how to export because the export costs, the packaging cost is very expensive, but also the, the custom, it's because Switzerland is not directly EU. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little bit of a point. Sure. So that makes us hard to get in uproad. Yeah, sure. That's, that's for sure. Which are, can you mention some of your best selling chocolate bars and which are the peculiarities in flavors of, of those bars? Our best selling bars at the moment is, um, of course, the Petulia one, because it's really crazy. It also really have a hint from, um, from how I can say, from pineapple. It's really oh, yes. a strong hint of pineapple. But also, the best selling bars, and I'm honest, is not the bean to bar. It's more the commercial chocolate, for example. 
It's um, our funny one. Um, it's the Beta Zeta. Uh -huh. It has Pop Rocks inside. It's a 70% percentage pinto bar chocolate, but with Pop Rocks. And mm -hmm. it's a little bit a statement for people. They like this kind of flag. <laughs> so it's also called it, um, our bars call it human kindness. Okay. Yes. Um, so it's, um, it's getting amazing. We have a bar which is one of our top seller. It's with rapeseed, golsa in um, Italian. Uh -huh. and, um, we roast the seeds. Yeah. We roast the seeds and it's fitting perfectly with milk chocolate. Yeah. Um, and what we do is we creating stories. We create uh -huh. stories. For example, this is just a little bit of funny chocolate, um, the vaccination <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> yeah. it's, we have the vaccination one, the vaccination two, but it works like hell. Because <laughs> nowadays it's not just the quality a point. You have to create stories. Yeah. You have to create stories behind it, everything. Also on our bean to bar. That's really important. New we have a QR code behind it. Uh -huh. yeah. Can you see it? Uh-huh. Um, yeah. so if you shoot the QR code, you directly go directly to the farmer or to the corporation and yes. um, get more information and everything. And um, that is also what the people like. So and the newest one, um, it's working like hell. It's our Zurich chocolate. It's written in Swiss German Zurich. Uh -huh. So this is more, uh, more like for tourists, which at the moment you don't have. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> also, but also for people that are living in Zurich, which we did um, this crazy lion with our own mold. Ah, okay. Great. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this is also really working like hell. So we do a lot of um, customer yeah. presence, B two B presence, and everything, and yeah. um, that that helps us because the bean to bar, <coughs> or the, I, I wouldn't say the bean to bar, because everything is bean to bar, but the fine flavor, it's still hard to sell in the market. Yeah. So what I can give you a tip for the for all the bean to bar makers: don't prostitute yourself, but um, um, also think about not everyone want to go on a flavor journey. Some people, they want to buy from small producers, but they still want to having a little bit this commercial flavors like vanilla or a little bit more sugar. Yeah, yeah the, the, the main problem for, for a, a bean to chocolate maker in uh, Switzerland is that the, the story of the flavor of chocolate is uh, it's particular, it's more commercial, so it is very hard and very difficult for somebody like you that to, to try to, to turn, to change this. It is difficult, but you have to do. Yeah. And um, okay, we are quite finished and uh, like to all our guests, I say to you the, the, the main question, how do you see uh, totally in uh, the next 10 years and how do you see Bean to Bar uh, market? in the 2030? Good question. <laughs> How do I see the market in the, in the future? Yeah, in the next 10 years. Um, I think in my mind is um, people getting more conscious or more serious about what they eat or what they put into their mouth. In general, food in general. Yes, but all the time the question is, um, the question is, um, how you get to these people, how to communicate to these people. And um, I think the bean to bar mark, market will, is, will grow, but not like hell. Because at the end, even here, uh, one of the biggest company which is producing um, in industrial is now starting to use the word bean to bar. So um, I think for the future, it's really important. It's really important. I'm now super direct to everyone. But in future, it's really important. What is the word bean to bar? What does it mean? Because the industrial is also doing bean to bar. Yeah. What, 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 what is bean to bar? Is bean to bar also the sourcing, the sustainability, which you can show it? And also, is the bean to bar just if you source the beans and don't produce it, you let it produce, it is also at the market, or if you really do all the steps and look also after the quality and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think if it's, if it's going mixed, 
um, it's going vanished and the people get distracted about um, what is bean to bar. So it needs a clear definition of bean to bar and it's, there is still not clear definition of bean to bar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably so far it's uh, two ingredients, chocolate or fine chocolate. Probably it's, it's just link connected to that. That is also the point because we start to call our bean to bar chocolate um, or the fine flavors, we really start to call them bean to bar fine flavor. Okay. Yeah. Because that the people really see, hey, there is something different. Um, I go on a travel or I go on a sensory journey. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for your time. You, okay. It's been very interesting. It has been a big pleasure to, to see that also in uh, Switzerland, the, in the house of uh, chocolate, the bean to bar is, uh, is fighting growing. and is growing. We are just 800 meters on the air from Lind away. <laughs> <laughs> you are brave. You are very brave guy. <laughs> They had to be careful, so they <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not kilometers, meters. <laughs> yeah. So you are dangerous for that. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. Thank you very thank much. You very much Kate. See you soon. It's been a pleasure. Yes, it's been a pleasure, and thank you also very for your support in everything. Okay. And um, we love it. Have, have a nice evening. <laughs>